We're going to go on the record on the telephone. Do I have Mr. Means and Mr. Webb? All right, we're going to go on the record here. This is case number CR 3320-302, State of Idaho versus Lori uh, Noreen Ballo, a.k.a. Lori Noreen Daybell. Uh, this matter is set for a hearing based upon the motion that was filed two days ago to disqualify me as the judge presiding over the case. Um, this matter was heard yesterday via telephone. The court heard argument from the state. The court heard argument from the defense. The defense filed the motion to disqualify me as the magistrate. The state filed an objection to that, and then uh, the argument was heard from both parties. The court uh, took it under advisement so that I could have some time to research and discover if there was anything else I needed to take into consideration before ruling on the motion to disqualify. There's one thing I want to take up before I issue my ruling here today. Mr. Wood and Mr. Means and Webb there was a stipulation to continue the preliminary hearing and a proposed order to continue the preliminary hearing. Um, after the motion to disqualify has been filed, I note that under A11, it designates what I can do as a judge while the motion is pending to disqualify. And it designates that uh, I can do the initial appearance and or the arraignment, which have already been done as far as the, the magistrate level. When the parties and the disqualified judge have agreed in writing or on the record, the disqualified judge may preside over any other hearing and decide any other issue in the case. Uh, the issue that I would like to have resolved here before we uh, move forward is the continuance, just so that there's a little bit of stability on when the preliminary hearing will be scheduled. I know that there's been a stipulation reached. It's been filed to continue the preliminary hearing, and it's been uh, stipulated that it would take place on May 7th and 8th at 9 a.m. The order to continue the preliminary hearing has not been signed yet because of this motion to disqualify. I note that there's also been a waiver of statutory speedy preliminary hearing that was filed on the 12th of March yesterday. And so, Mr. Wood, are you in agreement that I can sign the order continuing the preliminary hearing at this point? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Means and Mr. Webb, do you wish to be heard on that? Mr. Webb, any? Yeah, thank you, Judge. Um, right now, um, and, I, and I can maybe get back to you later on this, I think I need to confirm with Mr. Means, but I would prefer that that order not be signed at this time. Okay. Uh, would it be best if uh, we took a brief recess so you two could com communicate about that? It's something that I would like to resolve today just because there are several people that need to know when that hearing is going to be held, and uh, those include people attending uh, subpoenas as well as other media outlets. Would it be best if I, we took a brief recess so you two could communicate about that? If um, no, Judge, I think you should continue now. Um, I, I don't think we'll, we'll be able to reach uh, a, a, an agreement between us at this time. Um, just as a heads up, I think that um, both my firm, Mr. Me and Ms. Anaglina will be filing a motion to withdraw. And so I think Mr. Means is, 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 is um, yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure how to answer that. I think we'll be withdrawing, and if that's the case and an order is issued, then Mr. Means' decision as, as the counsel to say bond was control. I didn't hear that last sentence. Can you repeat that last sentence, Mr. Webb?
raises the issue of who is representing the defendant in this hearing. Um, if she has uh, two attorneys of record who seem to be having different opinions, um, uh, where Mr. Webb has stated that he plans on withdrawing, I, I, and the state won't object to that. If, if they do make that motion, then I, I think if, I think Mr. Means uh, seems to be the attorney that's speaking on behalf of the defendant. So I, I, I think the the court should still go ahead and sign that uh, that order. Mr. Means, do you wish to be heard? Any more on that? I, I, I do, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I had a little difficulty hearing uh, Mr. Wood there, but uh, I think I got the gist of what he was saying. Um, I, I think the determining factor here is that the client has signed the waiver for the statutory limitations on this hearing. Yeah, I can clearly and unequivocally communicate to the court that it is the client's desire to waive that time limit on this hearing and, and be, have it heard on the 7th and 8th in which the stipulation was filed. I think there's also no dispute that the lead counsel in representing that to the court that it's the proper thing to do. I would agree with Mr. Wood that the, the uh, ability of the court to sign the order would be the right thing to do. All right, the court has listened carefully to the argument of both parties. The court recognizes there is a stipulation that has been filed and uh, under subsection a11, I think the court does have jurisdiction to rule on the issue of the continuance, and so I am going to sign the proposed order, and the preliminary hearing will be rescheduled to May 7th and 8th at 9 a.m. pursuant to the stipulation, as well as pursuant to the waiver of speedy prelim that has been signed, filed with the court by Ms. Daybell. Let's move now to the issue at hand, and that is the issue under Rule 25 that was filed to disqualify me as the magistrate. The court has taken considerable time in listening to the argument of both the state as well as the defense. The court has reviewed Rule 25 and has reviewed any case law relevant to Rule 25. In analyzing the motion, um, and I guess in, in summary, the motion to disqualify a judge is a right that, that every defendant has uh, there are rules relating to the motion to disqualify a judge without cause. There are time limits and there are time constraints. But so long as those are followed, every defendant has a right to disqualify at least one judge without cause, without reason, just because. Um, and uh, the objection that was filed by Mr. Wood pertains to Rule 25A2 that outlines those time constraints. Specifically, Rule 25 designates, in all criminal actions except actions before drug courts or mental health courts, the parties each have the right to one disqualification without cause of the judge. Under subsection A2, it designates that a motion for disqualification without cause must be filed within seven days after service of a written notice setting the action for status conference, pretrial conference, trial, or for hearing on the first contested motion, or within 14 days after the service of a written notice specifying who the presiding judge or magistrate to the action will be, whichever occurs first. And then the last sentence designates the motion must be filed before the commencement of a status conference, a pretrial conference, or contested proceeding or trial in the action. The court notes that the last sentence designates a contested proceeding, whereas earlier in the rule it says uh, hearing on a first contested motion. There are, there are many different ways to analyze this, but ultimately that last sentence is what is most relevant in my decision. And really what's relevant here is, has there been a contested proceeding in this action? And if there has been, the time for filing has already expired. So I'm going to analyze the contested proceeding. Uh, the court reviewed Black's Law Dictionary. The court reviewed any case law. The court reviewed all of the rules and the statutes. There's no great definition for contested proceeding. In fact, there's a lot of indefinite definitions of what a contested proceeding is. The court notes that many times in criminal proceedings, there are five or six criminal defendants that appear at the same time at a cattle call type situation where they have their initial appearance together, 
there is a public defender or defense attorney in the courtroom, and there's a prosecutor in the courtroom. During those initial appearances, as we had in this case, sometimes bond is brought up beforehand, sometimes it's brought up at the actual initial appearance, sometimes it's argued, sometimes it's stipulated to, sometimes there are other issues, issues like agreeing on what day the preliminary hearing should be set, issues about uh, how many witnesses can be there or, or what witnesses can be on which day. And those are sometimes contested. Those are rulings that the court makes based upon the argument. And uh, a lay person looks at this and says, okay, contested proceeding means that there's disagreement. Both parties argue their own side and then the judge makes a ruling, which is precisely what happened last time. However, the legal definition or the rule definition of contested proceeding is perhaps a little bit different. I don't know if a contested proceeding is defined by something that is filed beforehand uh, when the motion is filed. I don't know if it's something that indeed is just disagreed upon at a hearing that the judge makes a ruling on. But uh, in the end, the definition of contested proceeding, I think, ultimately decides whether or not it was timely filed. There is a a tendency, which is a very positive tendency, for the courts to err on the side of caution when it comes to defendant's rights. The court notes that under Rule 25, it is an absolute right for a defendant to disqualify a judge without cause. Um, that, that right has to be followed pursuant to the rule, though. The problem that I have is that I don't have a definition of contested proceeding, and therefore I'm not going to rule whether or not it was, but at this time I am going to grant the motion to disqualify without cause uh, just because I don't have anything designating the, the definition of a contested proceeding and I'm erring, or I, I'm erring on the side of caution and uh, on the side of defendant's rights to disqualify without cause. So with that, that will negate the need to hear further argument today on Mr. Means' motion on behalf of his client to disqualify me for cause. A new judge will be assigned to this case at the magistrate level. We'll set this for the preliminary hearing. I'm, I'm going to sign that order that continues the preliminary hearing for the 7th and the 8th. I don't believe there's anything else that we need to take up today. Mr. Wood, do you have any questions about my ruling? No, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Means, any questions about what I've ruled on here today? No, Your Honor. I appreciate your effort. Mr. Means, will you please prepare an order for the disqualification, or do we have a form, Madam I, I will. It sounds like the clerk here is going to prepare that, um, and before that gets filed, I will sign the order for the continuance, and we'll go from there. Great, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Webb, any questions? No, Judge. I don't have any questions. Thanks for asking. All right. We will uh, be in recess on this matter. Thank you.